Back in 1836, the Anishinaabe ceded over 3.8 million acres of land to the government. However, they didn't just give it up willingly. They asked to preserve their rights, fishing, hunting, education, and other items, as they wanted something left over for their descendants. Fishing is an important part of life for the Anishinaabe, as it was back in 1836 and it still is today. However, many other people thought that they were being greedy and hurting the ecosystem. Many Native Americans were harassed and even arrested for using their treaty rights. This time was known as the Fishing Wars. Big Abe LeBlanc was one of the well-known people of the Bay Mills Indian community who was arrested while exercising his treaty rights. In 1971, the state warden cited him for using a gill net and not having a state's license. Later in 1972, Big Abe took his case to an appeals court. Finally, in 1974, the court ruled in Big Abe's favor. Even after his case was won, the state kept pressing criminal charges on Native American fishermen. There were over 40 cases when Bay Mills General Tribal Council decided it was time for a federal case. After a long trial in Grand Rapids, the federal judge ruled in favor of Bay Mills along with the Ottawa and Chippewa plaintiffs. The fishing wars finally proved that the Anishinaabe could use their treaty rights without being arrested. They proved that they were not violating any laws and those rights were all written in a treaty made a long time ago. The Bay Mills Tribal Council, along with other tribes in the ceded land, made their own fishing and game laws. For example, the tribal members don't need a state license to use unless commercial fishing or sports fishing. The fishing wars were brutal time for the Native Americans using their treaty rights. They were constantly harassed and attacked by people. In fact, there was even an organization called Stop Treaty Abuse. It spread misinformation about the so-called problems that treaty harvesters created, like damaging the ecosystem and killing wildlife. A motto of the sports fishermen was spear an Indian and save a walleye. But in the end, it just proved our right to fish. Eventually, most of the angry fishermen calmed down and accepted it. And the fishing wars finally ended when the federal court judges made the decision to rule in the favor of the tribes. It took a federal judge to confirm that the treaty was stated. In all honesty, it shouldn't have had to go that far. However, it was needed to settle things once and for all. Local native fishermen had to get arrested and cited just to get a case. Today there are many Native American fishers, commercial and non-commercial. Many businesses go on lakes around the reservation. They can make money or they can just catch fish for their families. What mostly goes on is peaceful in the community and it's great to have that way.